Elevens, in this video we're going to be looking at electronegativity, difference in electronegativity and how we use this to determine the polarity of a bond. So whether a bond is ionic or polar covalent or non-polar covalent. This is so important. You don't want to skip any parts of this video. Watch to the end for all the teacher tips. Subscribe for more. Let's jump right into this one. Now remember we've been speaking about covalent bonds and also in addition in grade 10 we spoke about ionic bonds. Back to covalent bonds. Remember, covalent bonds was the sharing of electrons between two non-metal atoms to form a molecule. Now, what we haven't touched on yet is the concept of electronegativity and how this contributes to the polarity of a bond, which ultimately contributes to the polarity of a molecule. So in a covalently bonded compound or molecule, the atoms share the electrons. However, there is something known as electronegativity. And this says that when atoms share an electron pair, so for example, if we have a chlorine atom and a chlorine atom, or maybe a hydrogen atom and a chlorine atom, so when, let's speak about hydrogen and chlorine, when they share the electron pair, remember they share one electron pair, because it's a single bond, when they share it during their covalent bonding, certain atoms have a stronger pull on those electrons than others. They attract those electrons more strongly. So it's sort of something like this. Imagine this hand is one atom, this hand is another atom. They both share electrons. One of the atoms might have a stronger pull on the electrons. So they're still both sharing the electrons, but one of the atoms might attract those bonding pair of electrons more strongly. So they almost pull it closer to them, although they're still sharing with the other atom. And we say atoms that have a higher electronegativity have a greater pull or a stronger force of attraction on those electrons. They pull those bonding pair of electrons more closely to them. So higher electronegativity, stronger pull. And where do we find electronegativity? The key on your periodic table, this is the little key over here. This is the periodic table that you should get in tests and exams all the way to grade 12. This key over here says that electronegativity is the sideways number on the periodic table. So for example, for boron over here, we can see it's two. For hydrogen, you can see over here, it's 2.1. So here's the official definition of electronegativity, a measure of the tendency of an atom in a molecule to attract that bonding pair of electrons. It's a measure of how strongly the atom attracts the shared pair of electrons in a chemical bond. And just for interest, fluorine, which is a halogen over here, has the highest electronegativity of four, and francium, or francium, however you say it, is over there. It has the lowest electronegativity of 0.7. So remember, the higher the electronegativity, the greater the force an atom exerts on the electrons, the closer that atom pulls those electrons towards it. And I said, for example, in HCl, okay, hydrogen chloride, hydrochloric acid, chlorine has a higher electronegativity. Here it's 3, and hydrogen's electronegativity is 2.1 which means that when hydrogen bonds with chlorine, remember they form a bond that looks like this. If you do the Lewis dot diagram, there's the bond. It's a covalent bond. But when they share that pair of electrons, chlorine will have a greater force of attraction or a greater pull on that pair of electrons. And ultimately, this can create, if the difference in electronegativity is high enough, this can create a situation where we have a polar molecule, a polar bond. And it says it helps us determine polarity. You do need to know that because chlorine has a higher electronegativity, what that means is it pulls the electrons closer to it. It will therefore have a partially negative charge, whereas the hydrogen will have a partially positive charge. These little funny symbols, that means partially. So partially negative charge, chlorine has a partially negative charge because its electronegativity is higher, it pulls the electrons closer to it. Hydrogen has a partially positive charge because it doesn't have as strong of a pull on the electrons. And it makes sense because electrons are negative. So if the electrons lie closer to, to chlorine because chlorine has a stronger pull on it, it'll have a slightly or a partially negative charge. And here's another example of that. We just discussed that fluorine has an electronegativity of four, whereas hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. So fluorine has a high electronegativity, a greater pull or force of attraction on those electrons. It is partially negative, whereas hydrogen is partially positive. Now, don't get confused. 
the partially positive and the partially negative just indicates a shift in the charge, not an ion formation. So overall, hydrogen fluoride is still a neutral molecule. However, there's a slight shift in charge because electrons lie slightly closer to fluorine, slight shift in charge. Another word for what happens here is called a dipole moment. Now, if you think of poles, like the North Pole and the South Pole, where if someone says that's a very polarizing argument, it's two opposite sides. So a dipole, di means two, two opposite poles, negative pole, a positive pole. Working out the difference in electronegativity between two atoms that are covalently bonded or bonded in general, that can help me tell what type of bond I'm dealing with. Am I dealing with an ionic bond? Am I dealing with a covalent bond? And I can break covalent bond into two types, polar covalent or non-polar covalent. So working out the difference in electronegativity can help me determine basically the polarity of the bonds. That's what we call it, the polarity of the bonds. And this triangle, I hope you know at this stage in physical sciences, means change in. Change in electronegativity or the difference in electronegativity. And again, something else that I hope you know, that difference is always the one minus the other. In some cases, it's final minus initial. In this case, it's electronegativity of A or the bigger or the higher electro, more electronegative atom minus the electronegativity of the less electronegative atom. If we work out the difference in electronegativity to be greater than 2.1, then we know it is an ionic bond that is formed. There's no sharing of electrons because remember, an ionic bond is the transfer of electrons from a metal to a non-metal atom. Okay, so the difference, in, the difference in electronegativity is so great that they don't share. Electrons are actually just given away. Okay, so that's, for example, over here, sodium chloride. That is an ionic bond. If you work out the difference in electronegativity between sodium and chlorine, you get a number that is bigger than 2.1. If you get a number that is less than or equal to 2.1, then it will form a covalent bond. Now, remember, covalent bond is where they share electrons like this. And as I said, we can further divide covalent bonds into polar covalent and non-polar covalent. So if you take a look at my table that I have over here, I said, remember I said that if electronegativity difference is greater than 2.1, then it's ionic. If it's less than 2.1, so if it's zero or less than one, then it is polar covalent or covalent. But is it polar covalent or non-polar covalent? Very easy to remember. If the difference in electronegativity is zero, immediately it is non-polar covalent. So if your difference in electronegativity is zero, only zero, then it's nonpolar covalent. Like HH, the difference in electronegativity is zero because remember, H's electronegativity is 2.1, this H is 2.1, so in a hydrogen molecule H2, it's 2.1 minus 2.1, which gives me zero. If your difference in electronegativity is less than one, okay, so 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, whatever then it is weakly polar covalent. And if it is, big, if it is um, bigger than 1, but less than 2.1, then it's polar covalent. In grade 11, you don't even really need to distinguish between weakly polar covalent and polar covalent. You can just know that if it's 0, if the difference in electronegativity is 0, then it's non-polar covalent. And if it's bigger than 0, but less than or equal to 2.1, then it's polar covalent. Okay, that's it. And remember, greater than 2.1, then it's ionic. Here is a summary of what I just mentioned for you to take down in your book. So let's see how we would calculate the difference in electronegativity. You always take the big electronegativity value minus the small electronegativity value. Just remember big minus small to avoid getting a negative. We don't want to get a negative. And it says here, do not multiply the electronegative values by the atoms of each element. You see like the little numbers like NH3. We don't multiply. And the reason why is because when we work out the difference in electronegativity, we're working out for a bond. And a bond is between two atoms. So for example, a nitrogen and a hydrogen. I know that there are three hydrogens, that just means that there are three single bonds. 
So we work out the difference in electronegativity for one of those bonds. Maybe this will help make sense like what I'm, of what I'm saying. So you do have three hydrogens, one, two, three. But when we work out the difference in electronegativity, we're working it out for one bond. So basically the difference in electronegativity between this nitrogen and this hydrogen for this bond. And whatever this difference in electronegativity is, it'll be the same for this bond and the same for this bond because it involves the same two atoms. So let's work out the difference in electronegativity for the NH bond. Okay, we write difference in electronegativity equals. Then we have to visit the periodic table to get the electronegativity of nitrogen and hydrogen. So we can see that nitrogen has an electronegativity of three and hydrogen, as we've been mentioning, is 2.1. So when we work it out, it will be three, big number, minus 2.1, small number, we get 0, 0,9. No unit for difference in electronegativity. Electronegativity doesn't have a unit. And what this tells me is, remember, if my difference in electronegativity is less than or, or equal to 2.1, then it is a polar covalent bond. Then it is a polar covalent bond. And if you remember that first um, table that I showed you, Technically, it's a weakly polar covalent bond because it's less than one, but bigger than zero. But you don't have to say weakly. The most important part is polar covalent bond. What that ultimately means is that one of these two atoms, and in this case, it is the nitrogen, because it has a bigger electronegativity, will have a much stronger pull on that shared electron pair, and there will be an uneven charge distribution. Essentially, we are creating a polar bond here. This can essentially lead to a polar molecule. So here's a few for you to try. Pause the screen, try it, and then I'll do it with you. Here is that periodic table in case you need it. So BF3, we're working out the difference in electronegativity for the boron-fluorine bond. If you can remember from early on in the video, we said fluorine is the highest electronegativity is 4 minus boron, which is 2. Therefore, the difference in electronegativity is 2. And that is very, that is a, a polar covalent bond. Remember, equal to or less than 2.1 is still polar covalent bond. Please don't just say a polar bond. You must say polar covalent bond. And don't just say covalent bond because covalent bonds can be polar or nonpolar. Right, KCl. We are going to now look for the potassium chlorine bond. So difference in electronegativity, if you look at your periodic table, you will see that chlorine has an electronegativity of three. And then we've got potassium, which has an electronegativity of 0 0.8. Remember, it is always, always, always going to be big minus small. Please don't switch them up. You can't have a negative difference in electronegativity. And I get 2.2. Now, remember, if it's bigger than 2.1, it's an ionic bond, immediately an ionic bond which means that potassium will give away an electron to chlorine, which we know that is what happens. Remember, it's K plus and Cl minus. Potassium gives away an electron, chlorine gets an extra electron. Now, Br2, so it's a Br, Br, bromine bond over there. So difference in electronegativity, I hope you can already see that bromine is 2.8. 2.8 minus 2.8 gets me zero. Immediately, that is a nonpolar covalent bond. Nonpolar covalent. And I just like to remember that all of the diatomic elements, and obviously it makes sense, all of the diatomic elements, which is hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, have no fear of ice cold beer. That's how I remember them. Um, hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine, and bromine. They are all diatomic. And that means that they will all have a difference in electronegativity of zero. They'll all be nonpolar bonds. Carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. I know there's four chlorines, but basically remember it's bonded like this. Okay, that's basically what's happening in this molecule or this compound. There are four of these single bonds. So we're basically working out the difference in electronegativity for the carbon chlorine bond. So if you look at your periodic table, chlorine has the higher electronegativity, so difference in electronegativity. Chlorine is 3, and carbon is 2.5. So that means we get a difference of 0 0.5, and that is a, no, uh, sorry, not a non-polar, that is a polar covalent bond. 
polar covalent bond. Technically, weakly polar covalent bond, but still polar covalent bond. And our last one, we've got MgO, magnesium oxide. If you take a look at your periodic table, we've got oxygen, so difference in electronegativity. Oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5, and magnesium is 1.2. That gets us a difference of 2.3, which again is bigger than 2.1, therefore ionic, an ionic bond. And that should make sense. We've got the magnesium ion that forms when two electrons are given away, and the oxide ion when two electrons are accepted, it is an ionic bond. It's very important to know how to work out the difference in electronegativity and how to determine if bonds are polar or not polar covalent or non polar covalent or ionic because this will help us to, deter to determine whether the molecule as a whole is polar covalent or non polar covalent. And I'll deal with this in the next video. But just because a bond is polar covalent doesn't mean that the molecule is polar covalent. It also depends on molecular shape. I hope to see you in the future videos and subscribe if you want more like this. Check out the links in the description box below for other videos in this playlist. Bye, everyone.